Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.8 and Ergis Simulations Mirage F1 EE module. Welcome to Tutorial 5, Radar Air-to-Air -air Missiles. Today we're going to look at the Matra series of air-to-air -air semi-active radar homing missiles that can be fitted to the Mirage F1. These are the R530FEM, which is an older SARH missile, and the S530, or the Super 530. And this being a slightly more modern version of basically the same missile. In this particular instance, I'm carrying two S530 missiles. These were introduced in 1979, and they have a maximum range of 25 kilometers. Uh, the R530FEM is from 1962, has a maximum range of 20 kilometers, and uh, the F1 can actually carry three of those, uh, one on either of the wing stations and then one on the centerline fuselage station. But the S530s, the more modern version, you can only carry two of, one on each wing station. Let's uh, jump inside the cockpit. I currently have the aircraft in active pause and we'll go through the setup that we need to employ this missile. In the first instance, pretty much everything that we want down is down here on the armament control panel. If we work our way through these switches, we'll make sure that we have them in the correct positions. Uh, you're going to want your uh, sight selector in the middle, normal, marche position. This switch here is the, the fuel dipper switch. You want this turned on. What this will do is, at the moment of firing the missile, it will reduce the RPM of the engine for three seconds to ensure that smoke ingestion from the missile does not cause a flame out. Next, we have uh, more switches down here. Uh, this one is the fore or aft selector switch. Uh, this tells the missile whether we're expecting a head-on or a tail-on engagement, uh, AV being kind of head-on, and AR being tail on. In this instance, I think we're probably chasing our targets, so we're going to leave it in the AR position or the kind of tail on position. This actually is uh, designed to tune the uh, the fuse, so the basically what triggers the missile to explode. So you, it's not super important to have it in the right position at all times, but you know, for for best effectiveness, you want it in the right position. You then have automatic or manual firing. Uh, I actually don't understand the automatic mode. It's not mentioned in the manual. Uh, I believe that basically you always want this in manual firing mode. Uh, we then have the R530 missile normal or um, altitude difference selector switch. Most of the time you'll have this in normal. Uh, you can put it into the den or an uh, altitude difference mode if your target is very fast and very high uh, in comparison to you. Uh, and it adjusts the way the missile kind of chases the target. We're going to leave it in normal for today. You then have the salvo switch. You can either, either fire single missiles or salvos. We're going to have it in single today. And here we have the missile preparation switch. Uh, this is for both the Matra and the Sidewinder. In the case of the Matra missiles, uh, when you flip this into preparation initially, they will take 20 seconds to cool, and then they, they contain enough coolant to last 20 minutes. So just be aware of that. We've done an air start, so our missiles are already prepped and good to go. Uh, lastly, we want to select our missiles. So the, the, the Matra switches are these two front ones here. Uh, you have left and fuselage in the event that you have a centerline R530FEM. Uh, so this selects the left and the centerline if you have them. In our case, we only have a left. This one selects the right-hand one. So in most engagements, you will push in both of these buttons and illuminate both. If we look up at the HUD at this point, you'll see that nothing is happening yet. Uh, we need to engage the master arm, which is this Sec Armes switch. We need to raise the cover and move this switch into the center position, and that will arm our weapons. At this stage, the missiles are hot and ready to go. You can see that because we have these two yellow triangles. That indicates that the missiles are ready for use. 
Lastly, we're going to want to flip up the uh, the trigger safety here. Uh, I'll just I'll go into adjust controls and show you where that is. It's gun firing trigger unfold, uh, and by default, it's on right control in space. Uh, then to actually fire the missiles, we're going to want to use the bombs rockets missile in sight recorder button. What a wonderful name! Uh, that will actually fire the missiles. So I'm I'm currently going to do right shift in space. That flips up the safety, the weapons are now hot, and they could be launched at any moment. Um, so with that done, we're going to go ahead and actually acquire our targets. I'm going to pop the radar into a one-line scan just now, and I'm going to dump the range down to 35 nautical miles. And actually, already, I think I can see one of the targets. Let's see if we can get a lock on that. There we go, we've got a lock. So I'm going to pause very quickly just now, and I'll go over the, the new symbology that we have. Uh, now, keep in mind that um, these missiles require a solid STT lock at all times. Uh, the aircraft actually calls that the uh, the APC mode. So you, you need to make sure that you're in an STT lock just like this, and that lock needs to be maintained all the way to impact. We now have uh, the intercept queue. Basically, we can fly our aircraft symbol up to that dot and then align the wings with these two indicators here. That will uh, cause us to fly an intercept, as calculated by the weapons computer. Down the right-hand side here, we have the missile's time of flight uh, with a with a, an extra zero. So uh, right now, we're in between 400 and 450. That means the missile would have a flight time of about 42 seconds, something in that region. Uh, we still have the two triangles. We'll get two circles under the two triangles and a tone once the missile can actually see the target, once the seeker head is actually doing its job. And then we're going to fly until we get a green circle near the middle of the site. That's the shoot cue. That tells us that we are within parameters. Uh, and just so you're aware, the parameters for this missile are less than 80 degrees of roll, between negative 1G and positive 4G, uh, we cannot be pitched down below 8,000 feet. The system uh, enforces that we must be nose up. And um, we, you'll get a flashing red circle in the middle of the display when we're too close to the target. Uh, if you get a solid red circle, it means that you've exceeded one of these limits, either roll, G, or pitch. So just be aware of that. Be a flashing red means that you're within 500 meters. You're now too close to fire. So let's take it out of pause. And there you go. You can see that we've got we've got our little uh, flashing amber there, which means that we have one missile tracking. It's the right-hand missile in this case. I'm going to fly my intercept Q and get us into range. Actually, let's accelerate a little bit. Missile time of flight is actually maintaining kind of steady. I would expect that to come down. Let's wait for our green circle. Yeah, range is coming down, so that's us. We're about 12 kilometers now which is well within normal range, but keep in mind that we are low and slow right now. If we were at higher altitudes and higher speeds, we'd have a better chance of actually uh, getting a longer range shot. Just inside 10 kilometers now. Yeah, we are indeed very, very close. Actually, I'm going to maneuver... There we go, green circle. Pulling the trigger now. Missiles away. We need to maintain the lock all the way to impact. Let's see if we can visually confirm a hit. Nope. Oh, yes, sorry, splash. Just as I was about to give up on it, that was a kill. Excellent. Okay, we're going to break that lock, and let's go and see if we can find the other guy. Oh, yeah, that's a parachute. <laughs> let's uh, quickly cheat and peek at the F-10. Yeah, we have a further target just out here a little bit. Let's bring ourselves nose up again. 
Let's see if we can pick him up on the radar. Is that him there? I do believe it is. As always, though, it can be a little bit hard to get the lock in the first instance. There we go. We have a lock. Right, let's maneuver. Oh, we got red circle. Oh, no, we got green circle. There we go. Pulling the trigger. Missiles away. We must maintain the lock all the way to impact. He's around about five kilometers. Let's see if we make this hit. Boom! Splash. Second target down. Good job. Okay, going to hit the unlock lever, and that's us. We're back to normal. That worked perfectly. And then we could safe our trigger. There we go. And master arm could go to off and cover it again. And I would just deselect those two lights as well. And that's the aircraft back into a normal condition again. You, you'll see that the missile time of flight indicator has disappeared on the right, and it's returned uh, to showing us the altitude, which is the, the standard thing you have on the right-hand side there. So everything working perfectly. Uh, and that's, uh, that's everything uh, with regards to employing the radar-guided semi... well semi-active radar homing missiles that the F-1 can carry. Uh, like I said, you can take the R-530FEM missiles, they're a little bit older and shorter ranged, or you can take the more modern Super 530 missiles. Hope you all enjoyed that. I'll see you all next time.